friends and welcome back to the channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make project bags and purses and things like that. So welcome, welcome. And to all of you wonderful people who come here every week, welcome back. We are at 915 subscribers. Yay! <laughs> so our goal, our next goal is 1,000. So if you have not subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe. We have about 75% of the people who watch the videos are not subscribed. So if that is you, please, please, please click the subscribe button and we can get to over 1,000 people. So that would be wonderful. And once we hit 1,000, I'm going to be doing another bag giveaway. So stay tuned for that. So we have three sets of fabric cut out already. We have fabric for the Oxford pouch, which is one of my favorite uh, project bag patterns. It gets an A. And we've got all of these fabrics cut and ready to go. We just have to pick out a zipper for these and also the hardware. And we have to cut out the interfacing. We haven't attached any interfacing to this yet. We also have our drawstring project bags, which are cut but not interfaced. So I have to uh, get out some interfacing and attach it to that. But this week we are going to focus on the Squishy Project Bag. There it is, the Squishy Project Bag by Erica Arndt. I love this pattern as well. And this is what it looks like. It's got two fabrics on the outside and a big pocket on the inside and then a zipper. So we are all ready to go with that. These are actually interfaced already. And now that we have our Juki back, we can get to work on making these. And I wanted to give you an update. We had so much time in the car road tripping up to Monterey last week and time in the room as well when it was raining that I worked on my Segway shawl. So we are almost done with this thing at this point. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. It's got these little wedges or what I call bat wings and it is super long now. So it's got five skeins of yarn in it which might be too much. So we start off with this really light lavender and then we fade into a darker one, darker one, and now we are on the very dark end of the spectrum. So I've got, I think I just did the transition block. Yeah, so I've got three more of these wedges to make and then we are done. So the fun part will be trying to block this because I have to lay it out a certain way. She goes over it in the video and I just don't have anywhere but my bed to lay this all out flat. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. We might have to borrow my mom's spare bedroom, which might work for that in order to get that all laid out. So since we are fresh from vacation and ready to hit the ground running with these project bags, Let's get to work. We have a Coffee of the Week sponsor this week. Yay! <laughs> so this week's sponsor is Sandy. When donating, Sandy said, you have a great channel and I want to support you. So thank you very much, Sandy. And if any of you would like to do the same, feel free to head over to coffee.com slash lemon tree corner. Uh, as always, watching the videos and liking the videos is wonderful. But if you would like to give some extra support, I would love it if you would head over there. It's a one-time donation, and you can donate any amount that you feel called to donate. Okay, let's get started. I picked out zippers to go with each of these. I don't have ones that exactly go, but we will do our best here. So, we need 11.5 inches. And then I'll go pick out a zipper pole based on what we like. Okay. Running back to you, running back, I can run back to 
Got our Juki back, looking good, sounding good. Um, I don't know why I'm nervous about sewing. I think it's just because it's been, what, like three weeks now since we've done it. So we are gonna get back into the groove and start making these back. basically the size fleece that we need. I don't know why I was finding that so complicated. I even have it written in my instructions. <laughs> so not sure why I didn't do that in the first place. So we need 12 and a half by 24 and a half. It is my wedding anniversary today and my husband went and got the most beautiful roses for me. Um, we've been married nine years now but we've been together what, 28? <laughs> so it's, it's been a while for us. So, but very sweet of him to do that. I'm gonna cut a little extra here. And I'm gonna go through and count the number of bags we have. For this pattern, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to need seven of these. This is double, it's folded over, so that's two right there. Oh, well, 12 and a half. I might be able to get three out of this, right? Got to do the math. Okay. know if I've mentioned this before I feel like I mentioned it but I don't know if I was recording um, I'm looking for a stitched a project to do with all my leftover minis so I have leftover minis from this last project I've got leftover bits of of um, leftover bits of yarn from the other shawls so I'm just looking for something I can use them all in, kind of like a scrappy blanket or a scrappy scarf or something. <laughs> so this is, this is what we have in our travels here. So I started with the, which one is this? The Sugared Berries Scarf from Fiber Flux, which is actually a beautiful pattern. I just don't think you can see the pattern with the variegated yarn and the colors changing. I think it's too much going on. Um, I do like this pattern, however, maybe we can do this with the craggy tweed yarn we just bought. That might be a nice one for that. Then I switched over to this one, which is a block stitch, which is really nice. Only problem being is that 
I don't want a million ends to weave in, which is what I would have with this one. Um, and the whole point is to use up the, the leftovers and just switch to the new color no matter where it happens. So with this, I would have to have definite stripes um, and, and the beginning and end. So while I like this pattern, and it's really cool, um, this is not going to work for me either. This one is by Hooked by Robin. Um, I'll put the videos down below. But so this is another one that would be great if you had, if you were planning out like a whole blanket and you had the colors picked and you had a color to go in between. This would be a great pattern. So I really like this pattern. I like the way it looks. I like everything. I just don't <laughs> think it's going to work for this project. So I went simple. Let's go back to basics, right? So here is my favorite the linen stitch, moss stitch, whatever you want to call it. And just, you know, changing colors as we go. Um, I changed them pretty close to the end of the row, but I can change them whenever and I don't think it's going to be that noticeable, like here. It's really not that noticeable. So this is a good contender. And then I tried this one, which is, which one was this? The sieve stitch, I tried it in the, all of these so far have been in the 4mm hook. I tried it in the 5mm because it just didn't look good in the 4mm. These are supposed to be little eyelets that you can see, and I still can't see them even with the 5mm. So this isn't going to work for me. It's pointless. And then I said, let's try another basic one, which is the, um, which is the half double crochet. So it's just half double crochets back and forth, but I think it looks like a sloppy version of the linen stitch. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to be changing yarns whenever that hits, which can hit in the middle of a row. So I think this is going to be my best bet. So I think we're going to go with the linen stitch. Question is blanket or shawl? So. I have thoughts. Uh, if you have an opinion, put it down below. But I feel like I, I feel like a scarf might be a good idea, especially if it's this this tight of a weave. So a scarf might be a good idea because um, I don't know. It's going to be a coat of many colors situation, and I don't know if I want to wear something this scrappy. But it is like expensive wool yarn. So I feel like if I'm going to be using expensive wool yarn for this thing, then let's, let's see it. You know, if I take expensive wool yarn and I make it into a blanket, first of all, it's going to take forever. Because I don't have that many of these. And these remnants are not that big. <laughs> So I feel like I'm not really going to have a, a lot of a blanket if I start a blanket. Plus the rows, the rows are going to be so long that I'm really not going to have even a single row with one color <laughs> with the length of the, some of these. So I think what I'm probably going to do is do like a really wide scarf. So it's more of a, a scarf slash shawl. reason I've conveniently forgotten this part <laughs> of the pattern. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing here. Let's take the tabletop off. We basically have to get this under the sewing machine, but it's now a loop. So I think I really am not sure how we're going to do this. I can't open it up all the way because I added zipper tabs. 
which I can't remember if the zipper tabs were part of her original pattern or not. I don't seem to remember this being in my memory, so I'm not sure how I'm doing this. Because I can't, I can't have anything underneath this. So I, I really don't know how I'm gonna do this without getting something underneath this at some point. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I don't think this being unzipped is helping me. It's just making it more awkward. So I'm gonna zip this up. We might have to break this in the middle. In which case, what's the point of having a B1 continuous loop? Um, I might as well have a seam at the bottom if I'm gonna go through all this. It's just gonna get more and more bunchy as we go here. Make sure there's no fabric underneath. Okay, well, that's just stressful, but it's doable. I'm just wondering, like, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point in having the continuous loop if I still have to do that painful way there? <laughs> and it's not looking as nice as I would want it to look, so. Okay, so now we're going to flip this whole thing around again. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it being one continuous loop. Maybe I will just cut that piece in half. I mean, it's a nice design feature, but it's at the bottom of the bag, and if the top of the bag, I mean, the top of the bag is what I want to look nice. Okay, so basically we are gonna do our normal, our normal pouch style here, and get all those together and then sew them. We're going to leave our opening in the bottom here because we got two different pieces and then we're almost done. Okay, we are out here in the windy yard today to repot these trees. These are little tree seedlings from my mom's tree. I looked it up and I believe it's called cassia tree. They have these cool seed pods that they make and I let it dry out and then I broke it open and then I planted the little seeds that are inside. And we have about 11 or 12 seedlings in here that have been doing really good but it's time to give them their own homes because they're just gonna like crowd each other out at this point. So what we have to figure out is which ones are in the best position, which ones are in the best position to stay in the pot. Nobody's really in the middle except maybe this guy. So maybe we'll leave this guy here in the middle and transplant all of the other ones. Okay, so we have all these pots that we really like that we put the avocado plants in earlier. Um, and I think we're just gonna go with the little guys. Maybe one of the big guys, but we're all ready to go.
<laughs> I'm just gonna wrap them around. Okay, so we got the big one, and we got the Lucy, and another little one, our daffodils, which have not bloomed, and these ones, and then these are the ones we're going to leave in here um, to take over this pot. But we're going to have to add some more soil to this. Got the last guy all rotated, and now I got to go wash my hands. Good thing these aren't new nails like last time. Okay, here's where we're at with our scrappy shawl so far. I love this stitch, it's beautiful. Um, I feel like my knots are very visible. And I'm having trouble not micromanaging the color changes. So I kind of came into this arena where I melded several of the smaller scraps together, which I like. But I'm finding that I've got a lot of purple. So I've got leftover Purple, 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 purple. I've got a lot of purple. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I should wait for some more uh, scraps that aren't purple and add them in here. Um, I'm kind of going into this gray right now. And then I was thinking of green, light blue, another purple. But I'm, I'm kind of wondering if I should wait after that for some more scraps to add in. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have more scraps except for that craggy tweed. So not sure what to do. Because I don't really want to micromanage things, but I don't have any other colors like this. Other option is to buy a couple of mini skeins of blue or green to add in here, or this yellow. I really loved this yellow. I didn't have much of that. So maybe some more of those? So not sure, but then that kind of defeats the purpose of it being a scrappy shawl, right? Um, <coughs> this is just supposed to take, take shape over time with my scraps. Um, I'm thinking this might even need to just stay on hold until I get the next advent yarn in December and then I can add to that as well and have some different colors in here. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do these three colors and then I think I've still got, yeah, I've still got a blue that we can do and I think that's it. I mean, everything else, <laughs> everything else is shades of purple. We do have this really light one that we can add in, so maybe we'll do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do at this point. Hey friends, so that's it for this week. Thanks for coming along on the journey with me. Let's take a look at our finished bags. We have our squishy bags all ready to go. <laughs> so we've got our butterflies our bugs, our moths, and our beetles. We've got our kitty cats and our sloths. We have the coffee and the beehives and the foxes. <laughs> so, hey, I actually matched the foxes. I didn't even plan that. Um, so we've had a fun week. We are right on track, so I'm very pleased with the progress. These are so much easier to do when everything's cut out and ready to sew. <laughs> so that's a good... So next week we will be working on the drawstring bags and um, I'll, I'll take the week the weeknights to cut out the interfacing and get that all ready to go so that we can just purely do some sewing this next weekend. And I have a fun announcement about the channel and the future so um, I'll share that with you next week or as a separate, I'll, I'll probably share that as a separate little short video for you. Um, either next week or the week after, whenever it is ready to announce. So fun, fun, fun. We also have our Hobie yarn coming from Copenhagen. So when I get that in the mail, I will share that with you as well. And that will be our next big project. So stay tuned for that. And thanks once again to Sandy for being our coffee sponsor of the week. I really appreciate any anything extra that you do coming here and watching the videos and hitting the like button is plenty for me but if you do want to do something above and beyond that I would love it if you would check out the shop 
and uh, all the bags and stuff in there or the the coffee donation is a great way to just do a single one-time donation to the channel in the meantime i hope you have a wonderful week ahead and hope to see you back here next week love you friends bye